These are two kind of unique packages and I wanted to share them with you and a little bit about the story of, of where these cards come from. So let's get into this. This should be kind of fun. This box here has actually come from China. Um, if you've been watching this video, I order, I order cards from the website Card Hobby quite often. If you wanna learn more about that, I got quite a few videos on my channel about it. This one also came from Card Hobby, but this is actually interesting because Card Hobby now has a few sellers who are actually based out of the US. And this is free shipping, um, you know, it doesn't have to go through China. It's from a US-based seller, so, you know, so this is just like buying on any other sports card uh, marketplace in the US. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna share with you just kind of what I'm getting and 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 talk a little bit about you know like my approach to getting cards from Card Hobby. All right, so first I'm gonna share this small stack here that I got from the U.S. based seller. So you know this is this is interesting. This is a new thing that they have. Card Hobby a while ago opened up like an overseas warehouse, so you can order cards from China and get them you know a bunch of them together and then have them shipped off. But they've actually got a warehouse as well in the U.S. So some sellers are either U.S. based or they decide they want to sell their cards in the U.S. and we'll send them to the U.S. warehouse, and that's where these ones come from. There's, I don't know how many, from what I can find, four or five sellers on Card Hobby that are based in the U.S., so there's not a whole lot, um, but I'm buying from this one quite frequently, and, you know, my, my strategy when I'm buying is uh, from Card Hobby, I don't expect to sp spend as much as I would spend on, on eBay. Um, I'm on cards that I think, you know, may, maybe won't go up in value or might go down kind of quickly. I, I'm, I'm still bidding up to maybe 50% of comps. And for cards that I think are pretty solidly priced, I, I still never bid over about 70 to 75% of comps. So that's basically my, my approach. So let's look through these. This is a rookie auto, Franz Wagner. His cards are, are kind of underpriced in the Chinese market, I find. And I'm out of 35. It's pretty cool. Rookie auto. This is the gold wave. This is one I've, I've talked about before. Sometimes these gold waves are cheaper in the Chinese market just because they're Asia exclusive product. So they're more plentiful there. The supply is higher there. Here is another Franz Wagner rookie auto fresh paint from Court Kings. Is this numbered? Yeah, out of 199. This one is, was really very cheap. This is from his rookie year. So this is the Cade Cunningham National Treasures out of 99. Doesn't say have a RC on there or anything, but it is his rookie year, I believe. Um, we've got a Damian Lillard, Noir out of 25. I still do have a, a Lillard collection, but I'm only collecting things where he's in his Blazers uniform. So I'm not collecting any of his new stuff in his Bucks uniform. Another <laughs> rookie, is this rookie or is this second year? This is second year, I believe, but this is still Franz Wagner, auto out of 49. And this is a Kobe White. This is the red choice numbered out of 88, I believe. Yep. And this is his Prism Rookie. So that's that one. Let's look at the other one, which has a few more and quite a few Victor Wembanyama as well. So let's take a look. As I show you these cards that I got, um, there's some cool cards in here, but there's some there's an interesting story that I think shares some some of the positives and negatives about buying cards from Card Hobby. Um, you know, this batch, I actually, usually when, when you go about buying cards on Card Hobby, you, you, they have their, their overseas warehouse allows you to put cards in there for up to 30 days and then kind of compile them together. And sometime within that 30 days, then you, you batch them all together and they ship them off to you as one larger batch. Uh, and then of course, you, you know, you pay per kilogram. So the lighter it is, I think the cheapest you'll pay is like $35 for like under one kilogram, something like that. And then it goes up like an extra $15 per half kilogram, something like that. That might be a little off, but it's something like that. So usually what I'll do is just over a period of about 10 days, I will buy as many as possible. And usually I do 10 days because some people will ship their cards into the Card Hobby Warehouse very quickly. They'll get it fast. Others will take a little bit longer. So I don't want to push the edge of that 30 days. I want to make sure I'm getting all of the cards in there within that 30 days. So basically within a 10-day span, I'm ordering. That gives up to two weeks. If there's a really delayed thing coming into the Card Hobby, I can still get all 30, all 30 days worth of cards into my, into my system and then ship them off. This time it was very weird because I was about three or four days in and then suddenly the cards that I had bought over a three or four day period suddenly just compiled themselves and put it into the next phase, which is where they would start to weigh it to tell you, um, you know, how much you're going to have to pay for the international shipping. And I still had more cards coming in at that time. So I was like, wait, what? And Card Hobby is, this is one of the negative things about Card Hobby. They are really difficult to communicate with. I have sent off so many emails to them about two recent things. Uh, another one I'm going to share about here in a second, and still months later haven't 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 heard any responses. So they're they're 
at least English language customer service response time is pretty ridiculous. Um, so, you know, that was one of the challenges because I was like, hey, I have all these cards. I'm going to now have to batch them up in two different things. It's going to cost me an extra 50 bucks or something in shipping because, you know, if, if like this much, this many cards cost me $50 in shipping, which actually, you know, if I consider the domestic shipping in China was very low. And then, you know, each this is from from, I don't know, like 25 different um, different buyers. So it's, uh, you know, essentially like two dollars per, you know, cards that I that I bought for international shipping and I had only paid very cheap for the domestic shipping. So it's still the shipping is less than it would have been on on eBay still, even with all these additional costs. So I'm okay with it. But because it combined it, it combined too quickly, all these other cards ended up coming through into the second batch. And then it happened again with my second batch where it was just automatically combined way before, like two weeks before my 30 days was up. And then a third batch came. So I ended up getting three batches when I was trying to get one batch. So really I ended up spending, I'll, I'll probably end up spending like 100, 125 Dollars. I think my total shipping, I'll probably end up charging, being charged for these three different batches. It's actually close to two hundred dollars when I was hoping to get them all in one batch. That would probably cost seventy-five to a hundred dollars. So I think I lost about a hundred dollars because of that mistake on their part. Another mistake on their part is about this little stack here. So this is. Let's look at this first. I don't think the buyer, the seller, I mean, has gotten their money for this one because I still have this sitting in my account as never having registered as arriving in my overseas warehouse. So I'm going to have to go in and, and send them another email and see what's going on because this one is still like in a stuck safe stage. I When I opened this just now, uh, just off camera, I was so surprised to find these cards because I was like, I don't know what happened to them. And you'll see there's some there's a couple valuable ones. I mean, there's some low lower end ones that I got once I bought the one. This is all from one seller. I got these once I ordered a couple that I was really excited about. This is cool. This is the Steph Curry presentations. This is a case hit card from hoops and this is the one i was particularly excited about and i thought it was just lost i was like what's going on i've been sending them so many emails like why is this still stuck in my account it says i haven't received it yet but then i just opened it and here it is so clearly it's just something on the uh, technical side of things Cade cunningham this is numbered out of something um <laughs> i don't know if that was numbered or not and this is a luka Doncic 2021 I don't even remember ordering that one. That's strange. But sometimes what happens, because really, you know, this is, I've said this in other things. I, I, I'm sure I was aiming for that card and maybe also that card. And then once I bought those cards, I went ahead and, and put on low bids for all these others because they will combine it in the shipping. And then I basically have no additional shipping costs. And I might be paying like 50 cents for a card like that. That's just, that's just cool. All right. So that's that one. Let's look at this one. This one's pretty cool. This got a bunch of Wembenyamas and some other really cool stuff. This is the Clarity Victor Wimnama rookie card from Elite, or I should say rookie year card. It's an insert of some sort. This is the Spellbound Orange Die Cut. Scoot Henderson rookies one. This was really cheap. I still got some belief in that guy. Brandon Miller Acetate. I think these might be from Asia exclusive. I mean, they're much more common in Asia than they are in the US. Pretty cool. This card I pick up relatively regularly just because it's a good price that's just a piece of hair got a number of these spellbounds i think i might have overpaid slightly i've still got them for under comp but they're worth less than i thought they were going to be when they first came out i think they're much more common than i thought they were um this is the craftsman elite die cut is this numbered no but it is rookie year Wembenyama. there's another Wembenyama clear path elite another acetate card first steps Wembenyama, rookie year. Some more of these spellbounds. I could almost spell out his name. Not quite, but quite a few of these. Double exposure, Wembenyama from Court Kings. And we got some Giannis. This is uh, the SP Authentic rookie, but this is some sort of parallel. I can't remember the name. Oh, can't look at the back right now, but I can't remember the name. This is some sort of parallel from SP Authentic. That's pretty cool. This is the MB. This is called the Swirl Orama, rated rookie. This is an MB rookie also from uh, Panini Signatures. I believe this one is numbered, but it's covered right now. I, I can't remember what it's numbered out of. This is from the um, Panini International rookie. It's it's basically equivalent to like his Hoops rookie, but it's the international version. This is the rookies. This is a one-of-one one sketch card. Not normally the kind of thing I would get, but 
one on one one of one sketch card. I thought it looked kind of cool. Wasn't expensive. This one's cool. Emerging artist Luka Doncic rookie. So those are the cards I just recently got for great deals. I'm not posting the prices. I don't have them right in front of me here, but I definitely got great deals. I'm not buying these cards unless I'm getting great deals. Um, because honestly, I think there's like maybe four or five that are for my personal collection. I've been thinking about maybe putting together the full set of, of these ones. Um, you know, that Lillard Cook card was for the PC. The Abdul Jabbar card, I can't decide if I'm going to sell it or keep it for the PC. Um, and then the rest of them, I think I bought them to sell basically. Uh, but pretty cool stuff. If you're interested in these card hobby videos, you know, I, I'm using it still pretty frequently. So if you have specific questions or, or specific things you want me to show, show you on there, just let me know. I, I, I can make other videos about it if there's certain things that are topics that are useful to you guys. So just let me know. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Peace.